Our patient is a 55-year-old man presenting with diplopia. On examination, we found an exotropia strabismus, which was increased in the right side gaze. His MRI revealed a lesion in the right paracellar earlier, extending to the medial right temporal region. The lesion was hyperintense in T1 and hyperintense in T2, with intensive enhancement after contrast injection. The lesion has also destructed or remodeled the right posterior clinoid process. As you can see, the lesion is beneath the right cavernous sinus and has extended the lateral and anterior right paraclival ICA. Here are the steps of the surgery. The head is flexed and rotated slightly to the right, fixed in a three-point fixator in association with neuronavigation guidance. In this approach, drilling the pterygoid process and dissection of pterygopalatine fossa contents are the key steps in reaching to the lateral recess of the sphenoid sinus. Also, the vidian nerve and artery are seen and usually sacrificed. Here you can see the median nerve and artery exposed and sacrificed. Bone removal and maximal exposure are very important. Bone removal is extended medially to the cellular floor, lateral to the medial temporal area, superior to the paracavernous and SOF space, and inferior to the paraclival ICA and the superior part of the anterior genome of carotid. Here is the final result of bone removal and exposure. We have the midline and the cella on the right and the SOF and orbit on the left side. Before opening the dura, the reddish color of the lesion is seen. The dura was very thin and is opened in all directions.
After opening the dura, we try to dissect the lesion from the medial border at first. Any venous bleeding is controlled. We have to note that a clean surgical field is vital when you are dealing with neurovascular bands, just like internal carotid artery. After dissection and elevation of the lesion in front of the paraclival ICA, dissection plan is extended superiorly and inferiorly to the lateral and posterior. At this time, the anterior genome of cavernous sinus carotid is exposed. Continuous checking the course of ICA with neuronavigation and Doppler probe is emphasized. Here you can see the paraclival carotid and the cadaveric picture showing the working area. Blunt and sharp dissection in association to meticulous hemostasis are the key points at this stage. When we were dissecting the mass from the posterior border, inadvertently some sympathetic fibers arising from the ICA plexus were sacrificed as you can see in the video. Tumor dissection to the lateral is proceeded, and we found that the origin of the tumor might have been from the lateral dura.
The last part of the tumor dissection was from the superlateral part, which after cutting the fibrotic bands, the tumor was excised and block and hemostasis was achieved. At this time, you can see the arachnoid membrane of the posterior part of the right temporal lobe around the Meckel's cave, with very mild CSF leak. Also in this view, paraclival ICA and anterior genera of the cavernous sinus ICA is seen very nicely. For dural reconstruction and carotid coverage, we put a small piece of fat graft interdurally, followed with only dermal fat graft, to reinforce the dura and achieve full coverage of the carotid. In this case, the use of nasoceptal flap was not necessary. Finally, the sphenoid sinus was packed with surgical and gel foam without any need to tampon at the nose. The patient was discharged two days after surgery without any new symptoms. Thank you.